Welcome to my YouTube channel Sushant Reddy. Every week I present my life lessons as an entrepreneur in sales, human psychology and wealth creation. For this episode I refer to the ideas of Nassim Taleb from his book Black Swan and Fooled by Randomness. Annie Duke, author of the book Thinking in Bets and Howard Marks, a legendary investor and founder of Oak Tree Capital. In the last episode I discussed the dynamics of skill and luck. We said that the outcome is a combination of skill and luck. Low levels of skill need a high degree of good luck to achieve the same level of outcome. And high degree of skill means that a freakishly bad event has to happen to lead to absolute failure. So skill and luck are kind of inversely related. We also discussed that there are various biases that happen due to a poor understanding of where we are on our skill luck curve and where others are on their skill luck curve. Mispricing our own skill and luck levels leads to self-serving bias and mispricing other skill and luck levels lead to envy or authority bias. In this episode, I discuss how to mitigate risks originating from the skill luck interplay. Risk originates primarily when you either are at the low end of the skill curve or you misprice skill luck. When I am at the low skill level on the skill luck curve, to generate a same level of outcome, I need a big tailwind from good luck. Whenever luck has a disproportionate say in outcomes, risk raises its head big time. These charts here are misleading because we are in the world of probability. Nothing in the world of probability is certain. What we call as luck in this chart is actually a probability distribution that can cause outcomes to go on either side. If you want an introduction to probability distribution, please check my video on risk and probability. The link is attached in the description. Luck here means the thickness of the tail of this distribution. Higher degree of luck means a greater thickness of tails. Lower degree of luck means a lower thickness of tails. Lower thickness of tails means that there is a less chance of outcomes moving very far away from the mean value. Extreme good luck or extreme bad luck are not very common. For example, a COVID-19 event is an extreme event on the bottom side of this curve. For industries such as travel, airlines, hospitality, COVID-19 has caused devastating losses to their businesses. The second source of risk comes from our perception versus reality mismatch of our position on the skill luck curve. Our biases create risks because they impede our learning curve. Biases don't let us learn the right lessons from both success and failure. Let's see how. A success or failure when looked at with an open mind and analyzed fairly gives us access to what I call the learning loop. Success leads to a small learning loop because mostly lessons implemented to achieve that success are the ones we learned in the previous cycles of failure. The failure leads to a relatively large learning loop. So a series of failures and successes combine to create an upward sloping learning curve that comprises of several learning loops. When we are victims of something like a self-serving bias, this loop breaks. Since we attribute a failure to bad luck and success to our own skills, we have little incentive of identifying where we fell short on skills and what we could have done differently to reduce our exposure to bad luck. Depriving ourselves of this analysis leads to an incomplete or stunted loop. And since one loop doesn't feed into the other, we lose out on the compounding effect of lessons from both successes and failures. Now let's come to the key aspect of this episode, how to control and manage risks during the period of low skill. The answer lies in all the previous topics we spoke about. Here is my prescription for reducing risks in decision making for startups, especially in the early years. 1. Increase skills quickly over time. When skills are low, keep your exposure to negative luck at a low level. 
Three, constantly review if you are victims of some form of bias and correct yourself promptly. Number one, increase skills over time. As discussed earlier, as skill increases, we need more and more freakish events that can cause absolute failure. If we plot skill versus time, let's assume skill increases over time. So we are picking up more know-how and specific knowledge with time that is increasing our skills consistently. Let's say I draw two lines. A success line is a threshold line above which we can classify that our venture is a success. A failure line is a threshold where we end up losing everything and incur a permanent loss. As discussed previously, I will represent luck, a random event, by drawing a normal distribution of outcomes. Since luck cuts both ways, I will represent luck with a bell-shaped probability curve that extends on both sides. The top side represents all the worlds with a positive outcome and the bottom side represents all the worlds with a negative outcome. Let's take two points, one at an early date when skill levels are low, let's call it point A, other at a later date when skill levels are high, let's call it point B. I draw a fat tail curve on both sides of the skill curve at point A. This represents the occurrence of a random event that brings luck either positive or negative. At point B, I assume for simplicity the same event as point A and hence assign a same distribution. Now at a low skill level, which is point A, all the outcomes greater than FA lead to a failure. FA is a point where an event creates an outcome that intersects the failure line. Notice that thicker the tails, greater is the chance of failure. The area of the curve below the point FA represents all worlds where our startup fails. Now come to point B. To hit the failure curve, the same curve needs a much bigger and extreme event to happen. The point of intersection is FB. Notice how the area under this curve, which is a proxy for the probability of that event, is very, very small. This reduction in area is nothing but an increase in the odds of success for our startup. Even a 5% increase in odds can lead to a huge potential positive outcome in the future. So the key observation here is, so long as the skills improve rapidly with time, greater the age of a startup, greater is the likelihood of success. Most startups improve their odds of success dramatically once they go beyond the three year point. So the top three things on my list that help in improving skills. Number one, take big decisions quickly, but change those decisions slowly. Major decisions on what to do, who to work with, which industry to target should happen quickly. I found that the cost of waiting to make a big decision is usually much higher than the cost of making a wrong decision. Once you lock in a major decision, you define your boundary conditions within which you build your skills. Once these decisions are made, changing your vision or industry or team quickly can lead to a stunted growth in skills. Once a big decision is made, the cost of switching that decision quickly is much higher than the cost of persisting with the wrong decision. 2. Define 2-3 two to three actionable metrics and focus all your might to improve those metrics. Our willpower is limited, so don't spread it across multiple things. Focus on the 2-3 to three metrics and relentlessly pursue the improvement of those metrics. Channeling energy into improving a small number of metrics automatically improves skills. A metric for a startup could be anything from the number of people on the website to the number of client demos to the number of sales calls per month to the server response time and so on. Decreasing the number of moving parts in the business is the third factor. Keep your core value proposition as simple as possible. A complicated model increases the number of skills to master. More skills to master, slower will be the growth of the skills and greater will be the role of luck, especially in the initial years. 
to give an example let's compare two businesses a and b business a is an online marketplace that sells used cars without having an inventory business a is a market maker connecting buyers and sellers online so the key challenges for business a are where to find the customers what offers to make at which time how to bring back customers who dropped out of the website how to maintain relationship with existing customers business b tries to sell used cars online by holding inventory business b has higher margins and much higher potential than business a but business b is way more complex than business a business b will have to do all the things that business a does and in addition has to find the sellers online and offline has to do an accurate appraisal of cars arrange for the logistics of holding and maintaining cars arrange capital to make payments hire people who can manage those operations so business b has a much steeper learning curve than a and skill growth will be slower and more patchy for business b there will be days when something collapses and needs a lot of attention these disruptions can slow down growth of skills and make businesses vulnerable to failure to summarize building skills quickly make your business resilient to bad luck skill growth happens faster when you take decisions quickly and change decisions slowly identify the two three core metrics that you relentlessly improve and start with a simple business with fewer moving parts thanks for watching for weekly videos you can subscribe to my channel or to my newsletter on sushantreddy.com Until next time stay safe and goodbye